So somewhere along the line, you were told if you want to reduce your risk in your investment portfolio, you need to own bonds. Well, that can be true. But what kind of bond you own may not be reducing your risk at all. Stay tuned to find out why your portfolio is still so volatile even after you've added some bond mutual funds. Welcome to this episode of Plan Your Wealth with Purpose, Principles for Investing and Wealth Creation with Wealth Creation's Education and Tax Coach, Jim Fisher. I'm holding in my hand the latest summary prospectus of a high-yield municipal bond fund. This fund lost almost 49% in 2008. If you had this bond fund or one similar to this during the market crash of 2008, it actually went down more than your S&P 500 stock fund. How's that for diversi diversification into bond funds to reduce risk? You see, there are all kinds of bonds out there. Short-term, mid-term, long-term, foreign, state, municipal, federal, corporate, low-risk, junk bonds, etc. You get the picture. So just putting money into any old bond fund or even potentially diversifying over a few bond funds doesn't necessarily mean you are reducing your risk. Evidence has shown that the risk reward for longer term bonds is not equivalent to the risk reward of owning stocks. Similar to golf, if you use a handicap system to bring the investment to a level risk adjusted playing field, stocks will outperform bonds. My goal is to get the maximum return for the level of risk one is willing to take. Using this above analogy of the golf handicap, we are able to build portfolios doing just that. With this information, evidence shows shorter term, low risk, fixed income can be added to a portfolio to reduce risk to the desired level. On the contrary, if you just add a bond fund similar to the fund mentioned above, you may be inadvertently increasing your risk and volatility without any significant increase in returns. Modern portfolio theory has proven that over time, diversification into multiple stock asset classes is where the growth in income is generated while reducing overall risk. Adding bonds should not be used to add the kind of risk adjusted income and growth that stocks can. Adding fixed income should be used to really do one thing, reduce volatility. So maybe now you can understand that even though you thought you were following all the right steps in adding some bonds and fixed income to your portfolio to reduce risk, you were inadvertently creating more risk. And as seen with the almost 49% drop in that one bond fund. And don't think your advisor is immune to this. All investments don't suck. It's usually just a matter of using the wrong mix of assets. Download my free investment awareness guide or call me if you want a better investment experience. Thank you for watching this episode of Plan Your Wealth with Purpose with Jim Fisher. For more information, visit WealthCreations.com. Also, browse the other shows found right here at Toledo Biz TV Shows.